With the UN Climate Summit in Glasgow a month away, many countries have stepped up their commitments to cut carbon emissions to slow global warming. However, Australia, one of the world's biggest coal producers, is accused of dragging its feet. This week, its Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, said he may not attend the summit. Australia's carbon emissions per person are among the highest in the world. It's promised to cut them by 28% by 2030, but that's less than most rich nations. And it hasn't agreed to deliver net zero emissions by 2050, a key summit target. From New South Wales, here's our correspondent, Shama Khalil. The devastating bushfires less than two years ago were the starkest warning yet for Australians experiencing firsthand the consequences of a warming planet. But Australia's commitments fall well behind other rich developed countries. In July, the UN ranked at last out of 170 member nations for its response to climate change. Australia's record of reducing emissions stands above those who are claiming to achieve bigger things in the future but haven't achieved it to date. Australia is the second biggest coal exporter in the world, and in the Hunter Valley, it's the bedrock of the economy. At Quarry Mining, they've been manufacturing coal mine drilling equipment for nearly 40 years. We hear all the noise about going away from coal and, and we try to be ready to pivot, but we don't have a roadmap for that. We just don't know what is next, so we don't know how to do that. And it's incredibly difficult to turn your mind to that when you're in such a busy industry as we are now. Despite the global urgency, climate change remains a divisive issue here in Australia. It draws in the powerful fossil fuel industry and regional voters, like the ones in this mining community, where an anti-coal message doesn't play well. Without the coal mine industries, I wouldn't have a job. It's been in my family for as long as I can remember. Former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull lost his job because of clashes over climate policy within his own party and its coalition partner, which is powerful in mining regions. Right-wing politics has framed climate and the responses to climate as an identity or ideological issue. It's a combination of that, plus the fossil fuel lobby and right-wing media. It has just been a toxic political battle for years. With plenty of sun and wind, renewables are growing fast in Australia. This zinc refinery in North Queensland is one of the country's biggest users of electricity. With more than a million solar panels, it's now generating about a quarter of its power from the sun. It is the right thing to do. It aligns us more closely with our customers who are increasingly on an urgent mandate to decarbonise. Even though it's on the front line of this environmental emergency, Australia is out of step with its allies when it comes to climate action, stuck in a balancing act between its domestic politics and its international reputation. Shaima Khalil, BBC News, The Hunter Valley.